Welcome back to Made in Northern New York. Now a story about how one local organization is helping kids save the river. This is Heather White. She's doing her best to teach and live a lesson that she was taught by her mother. I have to think back to my mother who always taught me that wherever you land, you are a steward of that place. And we're along the beautiful St. Lawrence River. And starting at a very young age, children can learn the strength of doing their part as a steward. She's a volunteer on the education committee for Save the River in Clayton. Save the River is an environmental advocacy group. We do all sorts of things. Um, some of it is looking out for um, water quality and making sure that there aren't invasive species. Um, the bit that I'm involved in mostly it deals with education and that's getting out into the schools and talking to kids about what the river is. Some of them have never been out on the river, so sometimes it's getting them out on the water for the first time. It's really wonderful to take students out and get them to have that experience so they learn something about the river, whether that's something about the animals that are in it, something about um, the way that it affects our climate, something about uh, like early advocacy, about why you want to care if there's trash in the river. And then you get them out on the water and they get to see it and they get to experience it. And that whole experience, it really sets up the next generation for caring about our environment. Caring for our environment is caring for ourselves and caring for one another. It's the water that we're drinking. Uh, it, what, it's what goes into our bodies. It's um, everywhere around us. So it, it doesn't matter if you live in a city or if you live out on one of the islands or anywhere in between. Any of that is, you're going to have some sort of experience with water. If that's water in a stream that then feeds into a river that then feeds into a larger body of water like the St. Lawrence or one of the Great Lakes, um, it's all connected. Seemingly complex, they're working to break it down to comprehensible levels for kids in our community. Of thinking about, even the youngest child will often um, teach three and four year olds, you brush your teeth to the happy birthday song. Wow, that song goes on for a while. You know, you can turn the water off while you're brushing your teeth then turn the water back on. In other areas, kids often love animals like, well, puppies, but in our river community, it's more likely for a river kid to be interested in a northern pike. They use that to their advantage. Kids really love animals, um, so it's really easy to grab somebody's attention with that. So you might say, there might be a kid who's really, who really loves northern pike. And um, you might say, okay, well, if you really love northern pike, let's talk about why you might want to do some sort of catch and release program, where if you catch a pike that's 40 inches long, why you would want to return that back into the environment. Heather came up with a program to bring parts of the river right into the classroom. So I thought the pieces of the docent kit would be the closest way for children to have authentic in-scale experiences. So I painted a heron that was the right size. We created a wingspan so children could stand up against it. It would be at the right um, width. We even created a weight that children could pick up so that they could feel the weight of a heron. And with our older students, we would give a bit of history about the Slick of 76, the largest inland water uh, oil spill in North American history as of that date, and how it affected the species along the St. Lawrence River, and in particular, the great blue heron. So it lends itself to a history lesson, it lends itself to a science lesson, and it lets children have a real hands-on experience. Part of that educational program is a book that Heather contributed to called Haas, the Great Blue Heron. So Haas is one of our programs that we run um, Ideally in classrooms and in schools, um, also in libraries. Right now we've shifted it over so that we can do it uh, virtually. But um, it's a program that really talks about how animals grow up and how they also hope for things. This is their way of starting a deeper understanding and love for the river 
at an even younger age. I felt it was important that we had a way to work with the younger learners. I'm saying beginning at age three or four, up through second, third, and fourth grade, we needed an activity that was at their learning level that absolutely was hands-on and authentic. It's their hope at Save the River that these lessons of caring for the river, its animals, and its effect start in the classroom, but stay for a lifetime. Now let's talk about how humans are also engineers and how we change the environment. And so you keep coming back to those same themes and you keep building on it, and that's really how you make the river part of your life. Julianne Flora, the author of Haas the Great Blue Heron, wrote it when she was just a student. Twenty years later, she decided to publish the book with illustrations from her mother for Save the River, and now it's available to you on savetheriver.org. After the break, how one local school is changing their cafeteria to practically be a farm-to-table restaurant. Stay with us. 